What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? Welcome to J.K. Lee Sports. Welcome to J.K. Lee Sports. Man, y'all know I'm on location at Quarters, 4530 South Sherwood Forest. Man, I got a hell of a show. I can say hell, right, boss? Hell, I done said it now. Y'all stay tuned for more. Hair Artifice Salon is professional, affordable, and waiting for you. Give us a call or schedule online for the five-star look for less. This is your girl Megan Good, and I want to give a shout out to Mad Game ENT. Hey man, look, JK Lee, man, in having a great time. I'm my guy Trey right here with me. I'm going to beat him. Oh, look, I got it the first time. Got it the first time. Y'all stay tuned. My first interview is my guy, the Nick Williams, superstar defensive tackle. Man, the Nickel State Commit. Man, let's do this. Hey, what's up, people? Man, welcome to J.K. Lee Sports. Man, we still out here recording at quarters. We're having a good time. 4530 South Sherwood Forest. Pull up with the kids. The adults can have some fun. It's a, it's a great environment, man. I'm enjoying myself. My first guest on this week is none other than all district. I gotta write everything down. All district, all, all state, state, all metro, all metro. division one recruit, right. U High Cubs state champion. Y'all taking notes? Nick Williams, man. Yes, sir. How you doing? How you doing? Man, I'm glad to have you on the show, man. Man, <laughs> feel great to be up here, bro. For hey, real. man, look. Going into the season, you guys had a lot of, you know, everybody, a lot of anticipation. Right, right, right. What was the pressure in dealing with that? Because you know it was state championship or bust. Right, right. It was state championship or bust for you. Right. You know, you got six Division One recruits on D. Seven. It might be more than that. Yeah, it might be eight. Bigger. Off yeah. top of my head, yeah. <laughs> See, all these Division One recruits on defense. Right. Going into the season, how did it feel with the pressure? And how did you handle the pressure of knowing that you had to win this state championship? Hey, we really ain't come in with no pressure. We knew what we had to do. We just had, went up and up, practice hard every day, do what we got to do, and we'll be state champions. Is that what we said every day? And it turned out that way. We had some struggles up, along the way, obviously, especially like the jamboree and things like that. But after we got after we got rolling, I feel like the team just came together and we just we got it done. So well, the, can't the, complain too much. To me, in my opinion, the, the best part of that UI team was the defense. So talk about what's what's the uh, the film group like? Because like to me, I would be confident. Man, you talk about film room? Yeah. Very. Man, we overanalyze everything. We all watch a lot of film. Go ahead. We all recognize everything at three levels. You know what I'm saying? We be across the film room. D line be talking about one thing, and then we got. Austin and Justin across the room talking about coverages and everything, and we don't know what they're talking about. But Marcus the same Dawson, thing, another Marcus Dawson, Dawson, guy. right? They all, all the, all the little guys that was playing this year, they coming up. They gonna be D1 recruits too, yeah. for real. Now, see, I talked to you um, throughout the season, mm -hmm. and you got frustrated with the double teams, and I kept having to remind you that's respect. Right. So, what was your mental psyche going into these games where you know you gonna have two or three guys trying to block you? I'ma just. I had to do it for the team. I had to eat it for the team. It's not really a problem at the end of the day because I, after we talked, you know what I'm saying, I took it as respect. I took it as, well, you need two or three to block me. My teammates yeah, can get open. Yeah, exactly. And like we just talked about, we got a lot of division one recruits. Them oh, guys are good. Shit. So later in the season, they start coming off a little bit. I start making a little bit more plays. Got 
got off a little bit more, but at the end of the day, it was a team game. We just got to do what we got to do to win. You know, I had you guys as the second best team in the state of Louisiana. Mm -hmm. So I had Zachary and I had you guys. Mm -hmm. I, uh, and that's just what I'm going to live on. I feel like you guys were a tough out. I wish the Zachary U I game could have got renewed for this right. season. That would have been great for you guys to compete. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, we win the preseason. Wouldn't nobody rank you preseason in my top? JK Third. Lee Sports preseason top 20. Where I ranked you? He ranked me 13. I remember this. He ranked me 13. I was kind of mad at first, but it's fine. I mean, I'm going to be realistic with you. I mean, I was cool with my ranking. It's kind of hard to get up there as a nose guard sometimes. So, last week you made an announcement. Mm -hmm. I was happy about it. Right, right, right. right. So, look at the camera. What's Tell him that one. All right, all right. Tell him where you going to school and why you chose that school. All right, I announced last week on Twitter that I was going to Nickel State University. I decided to go there because it was the best decision for me, honestly. I mean, the scheme that was running on defense, outside, even even outside of that, just the school in general had good facilities, good good coaches, amazing coaches. They have ties to my school. Right. So I, we know the coaches. I know the coaches a little bit more personal than like maybe somebody else would. Right. And I know what I can do up there. So for the next four years, I'll go up there to Nickel State and see what I can do. I'm trying to make it to the league, but either way, they're going to have me right. So that's yeah. why I chose to go there. I'm thoroughly impressed, man. Glad you came on the show. But look, y'all stay tuned. We're going to be right back after these messages. <laughs> What's up, beautiful? How you doing? Hey, how you doing? Look, look, I'm just trying to see if I can get your number. If you interested in me, you got to show my son some love. Take advantage of our mix and match sale. All floor items, two for 55. At Fashion Stop, we enhance your wardrobe without breaking your bank. Two for 55. Located at 8143 Florida Boulevard. Hello everyone, I'm Brandon Griffin, AKA Mr. Grip. I'm Bentley, the Hip Hop Barber Pole. The Hip Hop Barbershop offers the best haircuts. We service ladies too, Grip. Ladies, we can do your eyebrows and your cut as well. We welcome walk-ins, but tell them about the online booking. That's right, you can book an appointment online as well. Or give us a call at 225-252-7773. We know the flavor, neighbor. Welcome back, people. Now, y'all know I can't have a show without doing some basketball highlights. I gotta do that. So without further ado, let's take it to Walker High for the Martin Luther King Classic. My first game featured a showdown between two top-ranked teams, the Walker Lady Cats versus the Brutal Lady Panthers. Brutal came out aggressive, led by junior Tia Anderson, who scored eight points in the first quarter, helping her team to a 13-11 lead. Anderson finished the game with 23 leading all score. She has been playing at a high level all season, and she's only a junior. Man, somebody better recruit Tia, but Walker has some talent on their team too. And they was on full display in this one. Four players scored in double digits, led by Kennedy Ard and Rayana Sterlington, who both had 12. Division one recruit Kaylin Travis added 11. Man, she just picked up an offer from Nichols. I'm real proud of her. And junior center Anise Scott scored 10 as Walker outlasted Brutally 55 to 49. Man, I was really impressed with Brutally. But man, them Walker Lady Cats are just different. Game two featured 3A Downsonville versus 4A Powerhouse Liberty. And y'all, them Lady Patriots had it on their mind in this one. Liberty had three players scoring double digits. Sophomore guard Kasharia Woods led the way with 15. Mashaya Cherry's been shooting the basketball better than everybody else in the city. Boy or girl, she knocked down four three-pointers and finished the game with 12. Senior power forward Sierra Myers got in on the fun too. She scored 10 as the Lady Patriots won by 21. Final score 61 to 40. Great win, ladies. And look, y'all keep it locked. We're going to be right back after these messages. Phoenix Air Spa provides its customers with a soothing environment. Incomparable professional services. And extraordinary results. Relax, recharge, and re-emerge anew at Phoenix Air Spa. Always aesthetically you. 
Hey, before I get on this table hike, I gotta let y'all know who my next interview is. Man, one of the most heralded quarterbacks in LSU history, and the current Woodlawn head coach. Man, my brother, Marcus Randall. Now y'all get out the way. I gotta beat Trey in table hike. Get out the way. Trey, man, get the thing, man. Hey, what's up, people? We back, man. I'm glad y'all stayed locked in after those messages. You know, we gotta pay some bills every now and then. But man, we still kicking it at quarters, man. 4530 South Sherwood Forest quarters. Y'all pull up. I'm here every Tuesday. It's Taco Tuesday. They got drink specials. Plus they bowling, man. Got the arcade going. Y'all pull up. My next guest is none other than my guy. One of my closest friends. Woodlawn head coach. Blue get Bluegrass Miracle. LSU quarterback. Come on, baby. Marcus Randall, man. What's happening, man? Guys, happening, man? What the business is? Man, appreciate man, you, man. Glad man, to glad, be here, man. I'm glad, glad to be you, here. I'm glad you came in, man. I um, I got a lot of things I want to talk to you about. Man, let's we get gonna, started. <laughs> Business Look, we're going to talk about one thing at a time. Uh, okay. Last season, you guys, um, I think Woodlawn won their first playoff game in what? Well, Two decades. Years, and, yeah, yeah, something like that. 10, 11 years for sure. Um, what goes into taking over a school and pushing them to a different level that they're not used to being there? What goes into that part? Well, I mean, you know, coming in, that um, that's the building process of it, man. You know, coming in, um, you know, they were moving up to 5A in, in 2019 when, when, when I took it over, um, coming out of a 4A district. Yeah. Um, I think that was one of the reasons why the coach left. I mean, he was, he was looking at it. They went 2-8 that year, and they basically were looking at it and um, and were saying, you know, how, how would they be able to compete moving up to 5A? So, um, Wait. Yeah, I mean. He said, he said that's why the coach left. I mean, I would, I mean that's my understanding, <laughs> you know. He ain't want that smoke. Right. Well, I mean, um, so, so, you know, basically coming in, you know, having a plan, um, obviously had some some um, guys that uh, came in that could play, you know, that were ninth graders at the time. Let's talk about your guys. Yeah, you know, we had um, maybe we had a good 2023 20, class that, that came in as ninth graders that came in my first year, which will be senior this year, which is the quarterback, Ricky Collins, was one of those guys. Um, now, you know, he's the been kid. heavily re re recruited. I mean, we had Jordan Matthews, a part of that group, um, Desiree Delmore, uh, Devin Boyd, Devin Jones. Um, Bitch, uh, Roy Tally Brackens, uh, Jamon Douglas the second. Um, I might be missing a few guys right now. Dewan Harris. I mean, we had a lot of <laughs> yeah, guys that yeah. you know um, that that came in and um, and with man, that. Hold that up. I ain't gonna let you call names and not say Gucci JV. JV, JV, man, definitely one of those guys. Came from Southeast, came in there. He was actually coming to TCA, where, where we was at TCA. Oh, okay. Uh, All he, right. and, uh, he and um, Cameron, John, um, you know, Cameron Johnson, yeah. and um, you know, Tim Jack, a lot of those guys came from Southeast. I was with Coach Lyles over there. He was actually, you know, coming to TCA. I see you, Marcus. Go ahead. So, um, man, you know, so we basically, you know, made the transition over to Woodlawn after TCA was closing, and they, and they, you know, called and offered me the job, and all those guys wanted to stay together. Of course. So we basically went over there, and um, and try to change the culture, and basically that's what we did, and that's what we did, as you see. So look, talk about going into, to me, the staple win of the season to me. Okay. Like last year to me, the Saint Amal game in in, in 20, uh, 2020? 2020. 2020. The Saint Amal game kind of set the vibe. In 2021, to me, what set the vibe? We gotta talk about it. You beat Division One state champion, Catholic. So going into that week, what were the meetings like, man? Um, I, was, you gotta hey, let us in, bro. It Come was on, actually man. real intense, man. We, we knew um, coming into the season that that, that, that we could um, be be lined up for this showdown because we had it last year. We had right. to, we right. actually played for a district title last year, right. and I think that we were coming off of a two week layoff because of COVID, and we ended up not getting hot to the end, and Dude, we ended up losing right. by seven, right. 38 25. But I felt like you know coming in this year that that our boys were ready. I met the stigma of Catholic High, you know, just going in with that. You know, a lot of teams go in kind of defeated already. Yeah. You know, so we knew that, that we could play with them. I mean, a lot of our guys know some of those guys play little league with them, so it wasn't no, it wasn't no fear factor, and that's all I want. I'm real confident about this season. Now, the district is changing. Lord, that district gonna be so much fun. Oh yeah. So talk about preparing. No shade at none of the the, the, the last district participants, but talk about getting prepared for when you get Catholic, you get Zachary, you get Scotlandville, all in the same district. 
what goes into that preparation, man? You know, I don't know if y'all know this, but his DB coach is my talking sport and co-host, so we're going to put the pressure on him, too. Yeah, but, already. Well, man, um, we want to play the best. As you saw our schedule last year, we had, I mean, they rated us the second highest schedule of, in, in all the state. I mean, everybody we played either went to almost went to the championship game or won it. Right, right, in right. In their division. Um, and it pretty much stacked up that way, too. And not only our district game, but our non-district game. Right. So we want all the smoke. I mean, that's what we're here for. I mean, if you got it, I mean, we ain't running from nobody. So, I mean, put, stack us all up. And man, I'm hoping they put the 5 a Playoffs back together. I mean, yeah. they, 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 they bought the boat on it. Yeah, they Please the put it back together. Put it back together. Put, you know? But look at the camera and tell them. Please put, it back, put it back together, man. Stop giving some of these teams easy walks <laughs> into these, you know, championship chip games that they got out yeah. here. You hear me? I mean, that's how I'm coming. Somebody got to own it. Somebody, you know, yeah. and, 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 um, and you put both champions in our district, so I mean, you know, our district title going to mean a whole lot this year. They get the 7 on 7. I want to let you know right now, we want all the smoke. Y'all out here. We want all the smoke, coach. Don't, 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 don't take your starters out. That's how we come. So what, what are some of your goals for the 707s? And shout out to RPA, man. What's yeah, some man, of your, um, your man, goals? We, man, we basically trying to get kids I exposed, man. Right. Get them on the circuit, get them exposed. I um, mean, um, week in and week out at, at our practices, man, we trying to help them on their skills, get get better, um, and get better with, with communicating, get better with understanding different schemes offensively and defensively, and um, going out here and, and competing, man. You know, that, that, that's what we do. So that's right. where we at with it, man. So we do, definitely doing something great for the state, something great for our city. Now we got, you know, four or five different organizations, so we giving a lot of our kids in this area and surrounding area. Man, we got to get together compete. and do a tournament. Let's get the business club, man. That's we we gotta get together and do a tournament. Yeah, man. I, mean, uh, I got the field if you want it. I got the. I, I got we gotta, the conference. We gotta this do it. All right, look. Before I let you go, we've had this conversation a few times off camera, but it's my show. Tell the story about the blue grass, the bluegrass miracle. We're coming in, um. Man, we practice these situations all the time. Every Thursday for five years I was at LSU. Um, Nick Saban, we all know him. He's a detailed guy. We went through every situation pretty much every week. And on Thursday, that was our, you know, end of game situation. And we went through these processes. It never worked in practice. So we knew what plays we were going to run. We knew we were going to hit Michael Clayton wait, on wait. the deep end. Wait, 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 wait. This Come had out. never worked in practice? Never worked in practice. I always get batted down. And we were obviously throwing it from a little bit closer because yeah. it would reach the end zone. It would be yeah. about the 50. And maybe about the 45 on the other side, but um, but we definitely find ourselves, you know, having to use pretty much our whole package. We have to get the ball at least close enough for us to try to make the attempt. Yeah. So now that we backed up, I got to hit Mike Clayton in the middle. If you ever see the play, that's right before it. Yeah. Mike Clayton catching the 15-yard dig across the middle where we yeah. take the inside guy, run the safeties out. We hit him right in the middle of the field, um, so we can get that big chunk that we look for. He he falls down immediately. That's why before he even hits the ground, you I see him jumping up time out yeah. again. We didn't practice these situations yeah. over and over. It's routine. Um, Get to the sideline, everybody knows what the play gonna be. You know, even though Jimbo Fisher does call it down while Nick Saban in the huddle. Yeah. Um, you know, 93 Berlin. So we um, 90, obviously know the so we obviously know the play. Get out and runs it. I'm aiming at Michael Clayton. And he actually, you know, he jumps up, uh, he gets his hand on a little bit, or he or actually interferes with the other guys so they can't see it. Jeffrey Henderson coming around the back of it for the catch, man. Um, as you see, man, got people hanging from the goal post right before I threw it. They run it, they run it off the sideline right before I threw it, you know. So it, it was hard to see it. It was hard to almost uh, sight for everything that was going on. If you're a football fan in the Baton Rouge area, you remember where you were when this happened. I was sitting at the house with my dad. We both jumped up. Now, you know, my dad is a Southern guy. Right, right. I caught him cheering for LSU. <laughs> Post I, two. Caught, I caught him Thank cheering. Thank you, Mr. Recall, baby. Yeah, I, I caught him cheering Silent. that time. Yeah. yeah. Well, man, I'm glad you came on the show, my brother. Man, I appreciate you for having me, man. Hey, man. I'll listen. be seeing you, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we, up. Hey, we pulling up. All right, it's up. Be right back after these messages. J.K. Lee Sports still kicking it at quarters. 45-30 South Sherwood Forest. But look, man, it's back to my favorite part of the show. Talking sporty. I got my guy really real here. I'm about to prove him wrong every time. Try. Like I always do, because he always wrong. Man, yell them uh, topics, man. First topic. 
Which team had the more disappointing season? The Dallas Cowboys or the New Orleans Saints? Me? You first! You, yeah. you always go first! You know I'm gonna say the Cowboys. But say it! I don't care say it! You know I'm gonna say the Cowboys. They had Zeke, they had Dak, they paid Dak all this money on the offseason. They had Zeke, they had CeeDee Lamb, Cooper. Man, that's like an all-star squad. Like, this was the year. Everybody was all Cowboy Nation this, Cowboy Nation this. How about them Cowboys? You already know. Everywhere, y'all made me sick. Oh my God, y'all made me sick. I had to hear it everywhere I went. I'm so happy that they disappointed everybody again, including you. No, no and I'm about to interrupt you. First of all, you can put your hat up. I was never disappointed. I knew we were an 8-1 team. I've been saying it. If you follow me on social media, I've been quite adamant. As long as we have that, we're going to be mediocre. We were 0-5 against teams with winning records, real. That's who we are. The biggest disappointment was y'all Saints. Let me tell you why. Going into the season, I had Saints fans telling me y'all was going 12-5 and, and winning the division. Y'all got a tight end and a guy that can't see at quarterback. You got a tight end, the other guy can't see. He's had LASIK, he's had LASIK surgery, the guy can't see. And y'all was telling me 12 and 5. Um, no, 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 you said it. Real, I'm not about to. I did. You told me y'all gonna win division, 12 and 5 at worst. Y'all disappointed. You suck. We had this seven it up the whole season. Yeah. You suck, you stuck it up. Y'all were terrible. We kicked y'all, blurt it out. We kicked y'all butt. With that seven string quarterback. With the seven string quarterback. First the problem. And they picked the dude up. The dude working at Waffle House. They picked him up. Had him for the offensive in the room. You let Teddy Bridge want to leave. Cause we had Jameis. Jameis was winning. <laughs> Jameis was Jameis was winning. He was doing good. He went out there, got hurt. They had the no, backup. The defense is great. The Saints defense is great. Sean Payton is great. Sean Payton is great. Yeah. Why, but why y'all trying to steal our coach? Why y'all trying to steal our uh, coach? First of all, your coach was with us first. He was a Dallas Cowboys offensive coordinator. That's all right. Cut the crap. That's all right. Y'all disappointed. Y'all was walking around the city yelling, "Who that? I mean, who that?" Telling me that y'all was gonna go 12 and five at worst. That's what y'all. And we almost that. made the playoffs with like 10 regular, almost. regular key, regular uh, people on the team. Almost. I played the lottery hey. last night and almost won 40 million dollars. Hey, can y'all post? Can we post a little picture of the crying cowboy fans? Just just sitting there crying and looking. I was crying. So happy. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. I know. I know that. They we were so open. disappointed. Oh my I god. I wasn't. I knew what time it was. We ain't be the team with a winning record all season. Now you had a hundred tags on Facebook. Everybody was tagging you. Everybody was tag. I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm a celebrity. That's what celebrities get. I'm important. Go ahead. Come on, executive producer. What's the next topic? Second topic. How many Baton Rouge schools will win a state championship in basketball? Over or under four? I'm going to say over four. So in 5A, Zach, boy Zachary, the boys everything, the Walker girls. I know punch and talking about boys, man. We're talking about boys, No, right? we're combining. we combining. Oh, okay. Well, all right, go So ahead. I like the Walker. I know punch Tula. That's not Baton Rouge, dude. I know, but I'm saying they 5A, so they might stop Walker. Oh. So, but I still like Walker. Uh. So that's two. I like the Sun Lab boys and Sun Lab girls. Lab fam. I like the Madison Prep Charger girls and boys. That's, that's about six right now. I like the Liberty Magnet girls and boys. Yeah? I mean, I, I like them. I hate to agree with you, but I, I mean, I gotta agree with you. Just cuz. Hey, when I'm right, you gotta agree. I'm right, man. Man, Baton Rouge just got Buku talent. That's all it is. Baton Rouge got Buku talent. Hey, but Lab fam, do not let us down. If y'all lose, Man, look, it's gonna be some pressure. All right, yelling that the last time. We agreed on that one. Hey, we agreed. Hey, I don't never want to agree. Third topic: Which men's basketball team will win a conference championship first, LSU or the Southern University? I'ma say LSU. S S I'm gonna say Southern. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, just cause I ain't gonna say they necessarily better, but SEC hard. 
the SEC is like the NBA. I mean, it's, it's hard. Like, yeah. there's so many teams. You got Harvard in there. You got Tennessee, Kentucky, Kentucky all the other teams in there. I agree with you. No, but don't agree. Don't agree. Don't agree. Don't agree. But no, let me let me keep talking. The loss to Grambling at Grambling makes me itch. I mean, I, I woke up in the middle of the night itching. I need some anti antibacterial soap. Anytime you lose the Grambling, the anytime you lose the Grambling, you got to itch. Yeah, I uh I, I didn't like that loss, but first loss in conference. You still running the slate. We can't agree, but I agree with y'all that I, I feel I mean, like Southern. LSU playing good though. That loss to Arkansas was bad. It's SEC. It's like the NBA. I mean, the Arkansas worst team in the NBA beat good. the best team. Arkansas is not good. People got nine losses. I, I, that is not I, a good I, basketball team. And you go into it. First of all, we got to stop Dave from taking these ill-advised uh, three-pointers. He the best three-point shooter. He probably one of the best three-point shooters in the conference. What you mean? That man got the green light. Yeah, but if you miss six of them in a row, it's time to put that put that up. Man, shooters keep shooting. Shooters keep shooting. See, I disagree with y'all now. Shooters keep shooting. Hey, Dave, Dave keep, keep shooting. Shoot, keep shooting. But. Yeah, I think Southern gonna pull it off. They gotta pull it off. I mean, I agree. At this point, Woods and got some good recruiting class. They playing well. And they and ever that, that they great on defense. That pressure about to get on them. They great. Ain't no pressure. Like it's their conference to lose. It's Southern, bro. It's always pressure. I like that. It's always. I pressure. agree with that. It's Southern. It's always pressure. Man, someone's be wrong with the water today. We agreeing on? Yeah, I don't like to agree with you, but I, I feel like you're right, though. I feel like you're right. You read my mind. Yeah, yeah, I he feel cheat. like you're right. He's cheating. He's cheating. But you you was wrong about uh the Saints, though, but we're going to leave it alone. We'll be right that? back after these messages. Who that? See how I get the last Who word. We'll be right Who back that? after these messages. Who that? Hey, I'm Zion Chris. Zion, I trust. Zion, I trust. Zion, I trust. I'm walking with J.K. Lee Sports. That's it for this week. Always remember to follow me on all of my social media platforms, JK Lee Sports. Watching this on YouTube, make sure you click that like and subscribe button on NGE Network. Then my guy, uh, A Twice in here, we chilling. We at quarters, man. Drunk bingo. Pull up on Taco Tuesday, quarters. 4530, South Sherwood Park. Man, y'all pull up, man. Holla. I'll be loud like you.